Hi, this is Jeffrey Smith. I'm the Executive Director of the Institute for Responsible Technology, the author of Seeds of Deception and Genetic Roulette, and I made the movie Genetic Roulette, which some of you, I think, have seen. I'm going to give you GMOs 101, what you need to know before the GMO Mini Summit. So first of all, what's a GMO? Genetically modified organism. They take genes from one species like viruses or bacteria or humans or pigs and force it into the DNA of other species to transfer traits. Now this is a new technology. This is different than selective breeding. Selective breeding uses sexual reproduction. That's what was responsible for the billions of years of evolution. But they're doing something different that they just done in the last few decades. They're swapping individual genes or sequences of genes, pulling it out of one organism's DNA and putting it into another organism's DNA. The process itself creates a lot of problems and they don't even focus on that. They focus on the traits. So here are the traits. Now, there are five major genetically modified food crops. Soy, corn, cotton, canola, sugar beets, also a sixth alfalfa used as hay for animals. All of those six are engineered with a trait called herbicide tolerance. They take a gene, generally from bacteria, and put it into the DNA of the plants so that the plants can be sprayed with certain weed killers that would normally kill them. So Roundup Ready crops can be sprayed with Roundup. Liberty Link crops can be sprayed with Liberty. And the crops absorb these weed killers, which are poisonous, and we eat them. So we'll be talking about in the summit what could go wrong by eating a weed killer. The other type of crops are the BT producing crops. BT is Bacillus thuringiensis. Basically, it's a poison. It's an insecticide. It breaks open the stomach of insects to kill them. It comes from a natural soil bacteria. So they take the gene out of the bacterium, put it into the DNA of corn and cotton plants. So now these plants are registered pesticides. So about 80% of the crops that are genetically engineered are engineered not to die when sprayed with poisonous weed killer, and about 20% produce a poisonous bug killer. And that's the main reasons they GMO. There's, like, there's also um, some papaya, some zucchini, and yellow squash. They have a disease-resistant gene. But they're very, very small compared to the other main six genetically modified crops. Now, the FDA said, we don't even need to test this stuff. It's completely safe. You ask the biotech industry, Monsanto on its website, no human tests are necessary. I say, yeah, a test is, undergo is, is underway on all of us. The problem is there's no control group, no monitoring, no experiment. However, when you look at the animal feeding studies, when you look at what people say when they get rid of GMOs, when you look at what doctors say when they prescribe non-GMO diets to thousands and thousands of patients, when you look at what livestock happen, what happens to livestock when they're taken off of GM soy and corn, according to the farmers and veterinarians, and when you look at the diseases that have actually gone up since GMOs were introduced, it tells a different story. We're going to be telling that story in the GMO Mini Summit from all of these different angles so that we're going to look at the myths by the biotech industry that it's supposed to feed the world, that it'll increase yield, that it'll reduce the use of agricultural chemicals, that it's safe, etc. You don't have to write these down. I'm going pretty fast. We're going to go slow in the summit to give you the bedrock, the foundation of what's a GMO and how to avoid it. In the United States, we don't have mandatory labeling of GMOs. 64 other countries either label GMOs or ban them outright, but not the United States. We'll tell you why that's the case also. Very political. So what we're also going to tell you is not only how to avoid GMOs, but how much power we have collectively to change the situation. We already are. That's the good news. So there's a lot of good news in this summit. It's not just gloom and doom. In fact, it's really an opportunity to empower yourself. And if you want to really empower yourself, we actually have an empowerment package that you can invest in, which will give you a seminar with John Robbins and I, answering your questions, helping you speak about GMOs to your friends, to neighbors, etc. We have a nutritionist who's going to be 
talking about how to avoid GMOs in, in supermarkets and restaurants. We have the complete transcripts and MP3s of all of the GMO Mini Summit, and we also have 10 additional interviews. It's kind of deeper dive information about GMOs and gluten, GMOs and women's uh, hormones, GMOs and pets, and some of the more significant dangers that we won't talk about in the summit. So that package is available for you if you'd like to purchase it for those who want to really get empowered to get the deep knowledge and who get excited about this and we hope you do so we invite you again October 25th to 27th free live GMO mini summit please be there tell your friends about it get them involved this is a critical issue it's not only a critical issue that affects everyone who eats and of course the entire environment and all future generations because it's in the gene pool but it's also a critical time We'll talk about that later, but the, the, the timing now is unbelievably important. So I look forward to seeing you and, and knowing that you're sharing this information with your friends because we, as I say, have immense power. So there you have it, GMOs 101, safe eating.